Okay, so this is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, I've had a lot of people ask questions on how I did certain things when I built my uh, home golf simulator out in my building. Um, the whole process took me about nine to ten months to do because I did mostly everything myself and it was only, you know, weekends and um, some days where you just had an hour or two. I remember some days like that light switch over there, it was uh, on my little lunch break. I ran over and, and ran the the electric for the just for the light switch it was like a five minute job and that's all that got done that one day um so i guess i'll start with some pictures of the final uh the final product of how it all turned out and then we'll go back to the beginning of all the pictures that i took during the process of getting it this far um so anyway this is where it, what it looks like now um I can go over, I can come back to this at the end because I'm sure there's parts in here that aren't in the other parts uh, during the build of it. Um, let me come over here, let's change the screens, go back screen, maybe, hang on. There we go. So that's from the screen looking backwards. Um, I'm running a SkyTrack for now, I'll run something else later down the line, I'm not sure when exactly. but. Uh, I'll upgrade to something. Um, so there's another view. That's from the other corner. Um, I'll talk about the racks and the bar and the TVs and how I ran the electric for all that and all that stuff. Um, that's another view. And there, there. Okay, let me go back to the very beginning now. Let me switch this off just for a second. And let's click off of that. And most of this is in order, so that works out pretty good. Yep, okay. Find this. Okay, so basically, um, I built a metal building. Well, I didn't build it. I had someone else build a metal building out uh, behind my house. Um, it was a 40 by 90. Part of it to work out of, and then part of it to put this in. So basically the room at the end is 16 by 32, something like that, close to, that's well, like 15 and a half by 32. Um, it's all steel framed, so all the walls and studs are steel because during this build the metal was cheaper than uh, wood. So it was cheaper to do that. Now there's some pluses and minuses from doing it in metal. Um, but anyway, so this is all metal. Um, drywalled. Um, I did have someone hang the drywall because hanging drywall sucks. I finished the drywall myself. Um, painted. Wife, kids helped me paint. The ceiling. Okay, so if you've never hung drywall on a ceiling, it sucks. And if you haven't hung one on 14 foot, it sucks twice as much. So, my thought for that was for close to the same price of having someone else hang it up there because it wasn't going to be me hanging it, I can tell you that, and the price of the drywall, uh, I just went with this tongue and groove, like six, there's, I remember there were 16 foot when I bought them and I had to chop a little bit off each side, um, well, one side, and... They're about seven inches or so, but they, they had a pattern on one side and then the back of them were smooth like that. So I actually, they, those are flipped upside down. There's closer pictures for that. Um, so that's why that is all wood because hanging drywall sucks and I don't want to do it. And I wasn't going to pay somebody to do it. So just stuck those in. Uh, next we got, let's see what's next. Oh, so the lights. Those are just LED recessed lights. They have like these little clamps. So it's like a, a circle. And then there's these little clamps that like a spring on the back that kind of flip down naturally. So all you do is just poke them through the holes. You fold them up, poke them through the holes and it like naturally just flaps down. And that was like a hundred bucks for those, for all those lights. I think there's, what is there, six? One, two, three, four. Yeah, six. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. That's about it there. Let's see. Go back over here. Oh, hang on. 
Looking at two screens, sorry. Got to figure out which one I'm on here. Okay. Ah, so it's left, not right. All right, so that is basically behind that screen is what you see there. So that wood at the top is part of the actual structure outside of the building. I mean, the building itself, that's the actual part of the, that goes across the top. Um, that's a mini split from Sinville up there. Now, the reason why it's up there is because I have a three head mini split that I bought for the whole building. One head goes up there. That's like a 9,000, I wanna say, 9,000 BTU for that one, which is a little smaller than it should be for this room. But I had to choose and I decided to put two fans in. So there's two ceiling fans in here to make up for the lack of air that's being pushed from that so it moves it around it does just fine oh insulation so there's four inch foam insulation all around the walls and then just regular attic insulation on the top um or was it getting at something else i was going to get to uh oh sinville so uh, here we'll go ahead and do this too while i'm at it this isn't going to be the best way to do this but I'll try to help out a little bit so the size of the screen isn't gonna be exactly right but anyway so this is where I got it from as you can see I have a three head split so cost wise if you're just doing it for one room I mean there's one here that's you know thousand bucks and you have to have somebody come over and run a, um, a vacuum on the line and that's it so it's not I mean, you can have see they're 7.99, so they they're even uh, they they can be even cheaper. Um, mine was like I said, mine was for three heads, so I have actually I have three heads in the whole building. So, but anyway, that's where that came from. So that's heat and cool, and like a thousand bucks or so. I've I've put one in before in a smaller building, and it was only like 600 bucks. So you can you can do it for less for sure. Uh, let's see, go back to here. All right. Okay, so the reason why there's pictures of pallets. <laughs> so every piece of wood in here that's not the ceiling is literally made from those pallets. The entire floor, the stand, the, the, the bar, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, I spent, I think, maybe 150 bucks, and I had somebody deliver the pallets to me. Uh, that was part of the delivery. So it was only like 130 I think. And I think I paid him 20 bucks to deliver them all to me. So I went through a lot of blades and cut all of these down. So I took them all down, cut them off, power washed them, sprayed them with bleach just to make sure if any mold or mildew on them was, was killed. And then uh, let them set out in the sun. And they turned out looking like that, which they look kind of cool like that. All right, so the floor, which there's pictures of that coming up too, but so plywood when I was building all of this was like sixty bucks for a four by eight, and I wasn't about to spend that. So a fellow on Facebook was selling these. They they came from pallets, but uh, basically they were four by fours, give or take a little bit. I think they're like forty two inches by forty two inches. Um, he was selling for like three dollars a sheet, so I bought all those. I think that was like 140 bucks for all that. Uh, oh, wrong way, left. Okay, so the first thing I did while I was working on the drywall was to put up something to listen to music to in here because you know, working with music's better than you know not having something to listen to. So my thought was, I found this. Um, speaker, uh, not a speaker. Well, it's a speaker, but it's a uh, like a TV uh, sound sound bar, sound bar. And I found it. It got damaged. Somebody had it, and it got damaged in water. And I took it apart and cleaned it. And I think I painted part of it too. But so it looks brand new. There's nothing wrong with it. It works just fine. Just let it dry out. So I mounted that up on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, that's it mounted up on the ceiling. Now the electrics ran straight up to it for then because that was just the the first um, 
you know, figuring out where it was going, and then I'd drill the holes through and run the electric through the top. So I had to build these fancy little L-shaped, seven-shaped brackets to mount it up there because I would, one, I wasn't going to buy something, and I wanted something that kind of kind of fit and match. So I took the scraps from the edge of the ceiling, as you can see the ceiling there. I took the scraps from it and built these little uh, seven-shaped bracket things that that point the sub the sound bar down, so it's kind of pointed at you. And so that was nothing. That was basically free. Okay, so the stand, the stand you see here, this was built from, um, so there is a tent company nearby that makes tent poles. And during the production of the tent manufacturing process, they have these boards that that will fail inspection or they're not straight enough or they're not long, I don't know, whatever it is, they throw them aside. I can get them for a dollar a board. They're either eight foot or six foot long. Um, they're, they're two by three, about two by threes. So they're a little smaller than a two by four, but for what I'm using, I was able to make this work for me. So that's all, um, I think I spent 60 bucks on pieces of wood for the floor. Uh, for the frame for the the, the subfloor here um, and that is all just those boards it kind of look like two by fours but they're a little smaller and then a scrap piece of plywood that was uh, laying around that I stained um, I think I stained that thing like a year ago and set it aside and had no use for it so I finally found a use for it so that cost me three bucks I think is about what I had in the wood for that Here's a couple more pictures of that. So the computer goes at the bottom. Um, here, I'll try to get you a better picture of this thing. So there. There, it's kind of the same angle-ish. Yeah, so the computer goes down there on the bottom. And uh, it matches the wood that's in everything else in here. It's like a, a coffee stained dark brown. That's just another angle. And that's after I stained it, stained it, stained it. Okay, and then that's what it looked like with a, a, a mount, or sorry, with a, a monitor mounted. Oh, monitor. So for the monitor, this is a different monitor, but this one is just a, a cheap um, marketplace TV with a HDMI input, and then even has a VGA input on the back too. So that's like 40 bucks, I think. So the one that's in that picture is smaller than the one that's actually here. But the mount for it, did I build this mount? Uh, yeah, I built this mount. So this mount was basically free too, but you can get them for six bucks on Amazon because I was going to buy one at one point and it was six dollars, but I had the wood to, to build it. All right, so there's the boards that came from the tent company. As you can kind of see right down in through here, they have like these little where they're tapered, or I guess, or cut on the ends a little bit. That's where the part where they use them for the tent. So each one of those boards was a dollar board. And that's just a picture inside the room. Okay, well, that's kind of starting from the end, but well, anyway. So I took all the pallets. Uh, the guy that had the pallets had these four by fours, and he just gave them to me. So he had like three, might've been four. Might've been four four by fours. Anyway, uh, so I cut those down used the other wood from the tent place and the pallets to build this bar. And I think I figured it up. The bar cost me 13, 14 bucks considering the pallets and the wood that was in it. So built that. That's what it looks like. Took it outside, power washed it real good, sprayed everything down with bleach and then stained it. So that's the same color stain as the computer stand thing. And I could have did a little bit better with putting the, uh, bunching the, you can kind of see through it a little bit if you get at the right angle. But uh, to make the lines line up, I kind of had to do that because the pallets aren't exactly the right size on each board. And I didn't, you can't even really notice it in here, but in that picture you can. So that's the, another angle of it. And then I think this is where I actually got, so I called a glass company and said hey I need a piece of plexiglass that was 
I think it was 96 by 26 it was the size of that and um, I think that was like 80 bucks maybe 90 bucks that was like one of the most expensive things in here was that piece of plexiglass on top of that not needed but considering the whole top of that's made out of pallets it's not smooth so that helps out a lot mm -hmm, that's how I frame the inside of it and ah, that's with the plexiglass plexiglass same thing different angle all right so that's after i put the fans up so the, the fans are two cheap fans i think i got them off of amazon that came in i think they were a pair for oh, less than 100 bucks i want to say it was like 80 bucks um but yeah those are just uh some cheap fans just to keep the air moving because that mini split head is not made for a room this tall the, the size of the room's fine, like length and width wise, but when, when they give you the math on how good a mini split head will do in a room, it normally means for like an eight foot tall ceiling, not 14. So, but I knew that going in, so I just figured that I'm gonna take the, take the hit on it not being as good to heat. It is good, um, as for the, the cold, the cold air is great in here, it'll freeze you out in here. And the heat's not bad either, but, um, the, the four inch insulation foam on all the walls um, and then the ceiling and then I put a fan on the floor that blows the air up so when when it is cold out like really cold I'm talking like low single digit cold um, it'll still keep it like 60 some in here but if I put the fan on in the middle of the floor and have it blow up it'll kind of help circulate all the air and then it does it does better but I just turn the heater up if I know I'm going to come out and play. Uh, I think that's the first coat of primer. That's just the big picture of the room with primed walls. Same. Uh, I think this is the first coat of the paint that I used. First coat. Okay, so that back wall that you see up there. That was that, well, not the back wall, but that top black trim piece. So, like I said, that's part of the structure of the building. Now, I didn't want to drywall over it. So, I took the scraps that I had from the pallets. And you can't really, you cannot tell in this picture. Or if you're in the room, you can't tell either. But, basically, that whole back wall is 4 by 4 uh, well not 4x4 four four. they're like 4 inch by 4 feet long strips of wood from a pallet that are all stained and then stuck on the wall so it kind of looks similar to the the top of the bar but it's all stained black so you can't really even tell uh, that's probably the second coat of paint that's that back wall same same probably another coat of paint it was definitely a cup okay so this is when I put the the trim around the top so this trim is the same thing that's on this wall this is four inch by four foot long pieces of palette that have been stained um, brown well dark brownish black and you can see I'll try to turn this can you see okay so it looks like one big strip like it's all connected but it's not it's only there are each one of those is only four foot long not even four foot it's like 42 inches so but i just i glued them and uh glued them and finish nail or brad nailed them to the wall and it looks seriously like one long strip i guess that's how dark it is i don't know but you don't even see the seams so I'm going to pretend like that was my plan all along. Uh, I figured you'd see the seams, but you can't at all. So that's what that looks like after. Okay, so the floor. There wasn't much of a plan involved when I did this. I don't like drawing things up and then trying to do what I drew. I like to do something. <laughs> this is not the smart way to do it, but... I like to do something and then look at it and think, okay, how do I make this work to what I want it to do? Which it may be more steps 
than what it would have been if I had planned it, but I, I'll just keep planning and it doesn't happen. So, for the floor, my thought was, okay, I gotta build the floor up. And then, why was I wanting to build the floor up? Because I wanted to put down the turf. I didn't want to put turf on top of concrete, so I got the pieces of wood that were from the tent company, and then those four foot, we're gonna call them four foot, those four foot pieces of, four by four pieces of plywood, I think those are half inch. They're about a half inch, yeah. And basically I laid it out just like you would if you were building a floor. And this is kind of me just laying it out to see how I was gonna, how, how many I was gonna need and how it was gonna fit. And so I would just, I just glued those down. So this floor is actually, no, I take that back. I did not glue the boards to the concrete. I, so that all the sides are screwed into the wall and then the boards here are screwed into the sides and the four by four pieces of plywood are glued to the boards. So it doesn't move, it doesn't lift, it doesn't do anything. But I didn't want, I get little, I don't like drilling holes in my concrete, okay? So I avoid doing that. And I didn't want to really glue it because, well, that sucks too if you ever have to get rid of it. So it's a floating floor. So laid that down. So this spot right here is where the mat was going to go. And for the mat, let me switch screens again and I'll show you where it came from. It was from alturfmats.com, I think. Maybe. Do I have internet? I'm trying to look on a different screen. It's not easy. All turf. There it is. So here, clearance. I think they're still on clearance. Right here. So they come by four by five up to five by twelve, and that's what this is. This is the five by twelve. And my thought is, is I'm going to wear out the center of this spot at some point in time. I will build an insert out of another mat to fit in. So I'll cut out a like a twelve by twenty-four piece or something like that that'll fit down in, and I'll just keep replacing that over time. So that's where that came from. And I have no problems with the mat whatsoever. I mean, it is, I do see a wear pattern where I've hit balls, but I mean, you're gonna have that. So anyway, so that's where that spot was gonna go. So what I did was I measured that out to be the five by 12. Um, I think I even got the mat first before I did that, just to make sure there was no surprises on sizes. So figured out where that spot was going. I left that open. And then filled all that in with every piece of scrap board I could find for the floor. So these are all glued to the piece of wood that's above it, so the four by four that's above it, and um, and screwed down in. See that there. Okay. And this is about the part where I realized oh, I should have done something different. So. I decided that I didn't want my the bottom of my screen to have any poles visible on the bottom. So like as if I was gonna hit a putt, I didn't want to putt and have the ball roll into the screen and then actually be hitting a pole. Or if I shank one down to the corner and hit a pole or anything like that. So what I was thinking was, and I didn't want to put a black piece of trim, like a foam piece on the bottom of the screen. I wanted it straight into the screen from the floor from the turf. So to do that, I realized at this point, that sucks, I gotta build another floor on top of this floor because I wasn't gonna cut that out. And actually, I had enough uh, boards from where I bought the first batch of the four by four boards to build another whole floor on top of this one. So I've actually bought too much at the beginning. But, so, I mean, it was only, like I said, they were $3 a sheet, so what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, We'll call that 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We'll call it 20, roughly 20, so 60 bucks. 
plus the board. So we're like 70 bucks on that floor, the entire floor right there. So, all right, so this is where I realized, okay, so I set my frame in, or at least I got a, a pole that I was gonna be using for my enclosure and laid it down and figured out how tall it needed to be to cover the pole with the turf, with the, the padding that's underneath of it and all that. So to do that, I had to raise it, I wanna say an inch and a half or inch and three quarter or something. So I needed to figure out a cheap way to bring the floor up. Now, if I would have framed out more boards, that would have just, that would have cost more. Um, and I didn't want to have to, I didn't want to use more of the one by threes or whatever they're, two by threes. So foam board. So I got this half inch foam board, might've been three quarter inch foam board. And I think it was like 690 something a sheet. So I laid that down and then sandwiched it with another piece of plywood on top of that, which, and then I screwed through it all into the boards that's on the floor that's underneath of that, which actually kind of works good because you don't, I don't, it gives it a little bit of a, a, a cushion. It's not much of one, but you can definitely, I mean, it's definitely not, it's better than it just being like, you know, hard on concrete. So I laid that down just like that, as you can see. And then I, I kept this board here in the middle to make sure none of this stuff shifted and I lost my spacing for my mat. Okay, so right here, I knew my computer was gonna be setting right here, so I ran a channel. Now you could do that, you, you could do this with conduit too, but that was gonna cost a little bit extra. So I knew I was putting another piece of wood on top of this, so I just cut out a channel right here and just kind of made my own little channel of conduit in between the foam. So if I need to, I can pull this all the way out through that wall that's over back behind me. So inside of there, there's probably another picture coming up because that's only one wire. There should be three. Yeah, it's like that. So that's how it's ran under. So that would be internet and HDMI to run up to the projector. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Let me make this a little bit bigger. You don't need to see me as much. Let's see. Okay. So, all right, so you can see here where I laid down my enclosure frame that I built. And that was just built out of conduit and uh, tent corner fittings, I think is what you search for for that. And I'll show you where those came from. Let me switch here. So it would have been canopies. And I probably spelled this wrong because I cannot see what I'm typing on the other screen. Canopyandtarps.com. And if you go to canopy fittings, like uh, I want to say it's the it's the there's a couple like the specialty fittings that you need to to do it, but it's basically these. So they're six. I think it's like eighty bucks for all of them the way that I did mine. But I actually have extra. I have more on mine than than you normally would, and I'll show why. But that's where those came from. So if you can see back here, there's another picture coming too. But so there, I have two two back parts of my screen. So my screen doesn't, my enclosure sets against the back wall, but the screen is actually 19, 18 inches from the wall. So if you hit a ball into the screen, it doesn't hit the, the wall behind it. So there's that, there's that space there. And I pushed it, the way I build it, I build it so it pushes up against the wall. I didn't have to. I could have done it um, different than that, but that's the way I did it. So this is where I was marking out where the next floor, those, the next floor had to lift and how high it had to lift to get over those poles. And there, so you can see, so my screen attaches to this pole and this pole just goes up against the back wall. Like that. Mm -hmm, that's just the foam. Foam. And that's the finished next floor up. 
then here you can see so there's yeah there's the internet cable uh, I don't like Wi-Fi when you're doing I don't know I'm not a big fan of Wi-Fi if you can get away from it and um, HDMI and then also about 12 inches over coming up is a um, aluminum um, electric line so it's through it's the conduit but it's the uh, what's it called the flexi you normally see it you know what I mean it's the flexible aluminum not aluminum well might be aluminum whatever it's the metal conduit flexible conduit stuff underneath of that just so uh, it was protected under there mm -hmm. nothing exciting again I like I said that's why you see each one of these little pieces that are in there is I used every single scrap piece that I had to fill all this up. So I wasn't, I mean, I, I used every piece of scrap that I had. All right, and you can see how this pole sets in this little channel. So this is like an inch and a half lower than this. This area over here is, is uh, above this pole. Like that. There you go. Better picture. And all right. So this is where I was figuring out this light that was going to go over the middle. So the light that I used was not that light, but I think that was just the idea of trying to figure out what it would look like and where it would be. But I'll wait to show you the light here later on. All right. So there's the mat. So with the floor built up and the mat missing like while building it so if you move this mat it's just concrete underneath of it all i had to do was lift the mat up to the floor so i built the whole floor up and then lifted the mat instead of having the mat set and then lift the floor to it that just seems like it was going to be way too much work so um, this is where i was seeing how much higher i needed to lift it to get it flush with the turf kind of see that there mm -hmm -hmm. all right so there's the mat the frame it's kind of the poles you can see how I how I did those there's a pole that goes across this too but I just had this up for measuring purposes okay so above all that I put carpet padding and carpet padding is only like 16 cents a square foot as opposed to like the gym mats those things are going to be like it was almost a dollar or something was what it came out to for each one of those so for the same kind of effect that's way cheaper and that's just uh, the whole carpet padding there mm -hmm. okay then I apparently I put a piece of trim around the inside of this ah that's what I did okay so I made the spot where the mat goes a little bit bigger that way, if the mat, well, what in the, if the mat, if for some reason I didn't have my mat square, like let's say that I screwed my floor up and it was a little crooked, I could fix the mat and then put wood in around it to make it fit straight and square. But it was fine, it was square. But I didn't trust myself enough, so I left it like, I think an inch or so on each side, that way I could twist it just a little bit if I needed to, to make it fit and then just put the trim pieces in to fill the, the gap and since it was all getting covered with the the padding and all that you'd never see it and you can see where I didn't put uh, I put the, the pad and then you know it drops down for the little um, so the poles are hidden mm -hmm. that's me trying to figure how high I had to make the mat. Okay, so there's how the floor is built. So we have one of those two by threes, half inch, foam, half inch, carpet pad, and then this turf piece. And this turf piece is that piece in front. I'll show you. I'm sure I have another picture of it. But that's how the floor is built. Okay, turf. This turf was purchased from Menards four years ago because I knew one day I wanted to build this so I stepped over this thing for three and a half years th longer 
uh, in the garage, knowing that it was going to get used one day. So it was at the end of the season, like the end of summer, and they had it on. Um, I think it was it was marked down to get rid of it because you know but most people use these out in their either lawn for pet area or something like that. But it was just uh, a. It's like a. Uh, it's, it's a good inch. It's a good inch. I think there's more pictures coming, but there's a. It's a good inch um, faux turf grass thing. So I laid the first piece down, and I, I can give you. So there it is. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Looks like that. Now, I'll show you something else. It bugs me, but it. it it's a it's a lighting thing, but I'll show you here in a second. So I just cut it to size. Okay, this is important. So the projector that I got is a BenQ. Something that ends with ST. I don't remember what it is, but it ends with an ST. I'll have to look that up and add that in there. So I got the projector. I set it down in the room and pointed it to the back wall against the actual like plywood like it is in the picture. And then I seen how how big of a screen could I get away with? How what size do I need for the the screen to be to make all this work? To make it as wide as I could from wall to wall. So I set it down at like 12 feet from the wall. My close to. It might be 11. Um, I think it is about 11 cuz I think it's like 10 to the front of the mat but so I set it down and figured out okay it's we'll say it's 10 foot 8 inches to the to the wall now my screen sets 16 17 18 19 inches something like that um, off the wall so I had to add that number to the distance from the front of the projector and move it back the 16 inches or whatever and then up so that would give me the size of the screen I wanted on my actual screen but I used the wall as a sample first and then pulled it back the correct distance of what it would have been to get to the screen. And that's where I was figuring that out. Okay, so this is where I had to build up the mat to get it high high enough to be flush with the turf and the pad and all that. So would you, like, if you putt, it putts off the mat into the little other putting mat that's in front which I'll show you and that's just apparently I just used foam scraps I don't really remember how I did it but scraps of, of the plywood and foam scraps I think I had to meet up with that guy again to get like four more pieces of wood because I was four pieces short okay so then um, since it was a bunch of pieces of wood and not just like a big piece uh, I found a bunch of staples that I had for my uh, pneumatic staple gun and I was trying to think I was like well I can staple them all together that way at least it doesn't want to lift and raise if something changed or warped or did anything funky at least it would kind of be connected and then kind of move together so I ran a bunch of staples just through the ones that that seemed like they could have needed it so they didn't move Probably didn't need to have to do that, but I had the staples laying there. So, and I had a new. I think it was a new. Uh, it was because I I didn't have a staple a pneumatic stapler, and I knew I was going to need it for this. So, it came with a bunch of staples. So that was kind of like me playing around with the pneumatic stapler. So that's where I had to figure out how high it was going to be to be flush with, because um, it's actually higher than the pad because the turf sets above that. Okay, so this little piece of putting stuff here. So the way that I did that, I had many nights of trying to figure out how I wanted to cut that out and make it fit nice and flush. So if I grab this camera, let me take this off, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And then I can kind of show you how this came out. Let's see. Let me see. Hang 
working on trying to see if you, what you can see and what you can't see. Okay, maybe not the best, but I wanted that to be a, a smooth, a smooth um, uh, transition from one to the other. So the way that I did it was I set it down on top of the turf and um, glued it. No, I didn't glue it. Hang on, sorry. Better. Okay. So I set it. I set the turf down, like the the thick turf, the big stuff, this stuff. Set it down. Set that on there, and then nailed it down all the way to the floor. And then I went around really slow with scissors and a knife and whatever I needed to make sure and I would just cut like a quarter of an inch at a time all the way around to make sure that it fit nice and flush. And then went around with a pneumatic stapler and stapled the edges to make it so that it doesn't want to lift, which I found a few spots that I need to, re to redo a little bit. But it turned out good. And I think that this little piece was a putting turf that came from Amazon which, let me find my mouse here, hang on. Ah, I think it was this one actually. A lot of these look the same, but it was, yeah, that's about it. I, I wanna say I didn't, I paid a little less than that, but that's what that is, so it, I don't think it looks as much like that as what it, show, what it shows in the picture, but it's definitely like a, putting turf or something like this so it, it works it's not it's not bad but it's not like it doesn't look overly expensive either though so which is fine okay so that's how I did that so this is um, uh, turf tape that's made to, to go underneath of this I didn't use it for this part but I did use it on the parts where the turf goes together and that's what I'm getting ready to talk to you about now. So if I had to do something over again, what I'd do different. So, okay, so I'm just laying out the turf. Again, laying out the turf, cutting, stapling. Cut all that off. Went through, trimmed all those pieces. And there's how, you can see how the transition came out where it looks pretty good. Considering I've never done it before, it looks pretty good. And it felt like I really only had one shot at it, too, so. Um, that's where I finished the rest. Okay, right here. Do you see how you can tell the difference between the way, how green this is and how darker green this is? Now, that is because the way the carpet's made, it lays a certain way. And if you turn it the wrong way, you will get a different pattern. Now, over here in the image on the screen, I can see the difference. But the thing is, that is just something to do with the light on the cameras. Because when you're in here, you can't tell the difference. It drives me nuts when I take a picture of it or you look at this. It's two different things. That does not look like that on the screen. If I look at this, you can't really even tell that they're running two different ways. And um, I think I did it that way because I actually screwed up a piece and I was like, all right, well, I guess I have to do it this way. And I was like, it looks good anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then I took a picture of it and realized, okay, wait a minute, these, the pattern's different. So it definitely doesn't look, it doesn't look like what it does on the actual image on the, on the screen. I wish there was a way to show you what it really looks like, but you cannot even tell in real life what, that it's a land a different way. So to fix that, when you get your turf, if you do it that way, and some of them already have this on it, flip it upside down and draw a bunch of arrows on it so you know which way is the whole, you know, one way. That way if you do have to do a patch piece or whatever, you can run it the same way and you won't have to look at pictures like this and shake your head and, and it bug you. But uh, it doesn't look like that, so I wish there was a way to show you that, but it doesn't. Um, piece of turf, I don't know why I took a picture of that. Uh, oh, I know why. So I was trying to sell that after I took a picture of it to get rid of what was left. And then I didn't. I decided not to sell it in case I ever need to patch something or if I ever do something different in here. See, okay, look. There's that same piece. This picture does a better job. This is where that piece looked really different in green. And look, you can't tell. So this, I guess this one, this is the one picture that you can't see the difference in. 
But anyway, that's how that came out. There you go. So yeah, see here? You can kind of tell a little bit here, but you can't really when you're in here, like I said. Mm -hmm. Same old, same old. Ah, floor. Okay. So, for the part that wasn't um, turf, I needed something to put down. Now, I don't like putting down vinyl. Um, like the sheets of vinyl, I don't like that. Um, because you have to use like this weighted thing and glue it down. And I'm not, like I said, don't like gluing stuff to my concrete. So this is like a floating snap together. Um, it's like a laminate floor, but it's like tile shaped. So it's like a tile laminate floor. And those just snap together. Um, yeah, it was 259 a square foot. And I don't I think I had to get, I forget how many boxes I had to get. It's weird. I think something just fell outside. Anyway, um, so anyway, that's it laying it down. Uh, easy to work with. Um, and you're probably supposed to put like a, um, a pad underneath of this but my also my one of my things are I, I don't I've had experiences with water in other places and other homes and garages and workshops and stuff that I've had where I kind of I have a hatred of water getting into something so um, I didn't want to put any kind of padding underneath of it just in case something ever happened to where water was somehow got in. I don't know how it would, but if it did, I didn't want to have to deal with pulling the floor up and drying it out with, because of some sort of pad in there that wouldn't ever dry. So there's nothing underneath of it. Um, which it, it kind of, it's a little clicky when you walk on it, but I, again, don't care. It, uh, it, it does what it needs to do for me. Okay, so, this is a net that I won at a fair at a raffle. Um, I was supposed to win one, but they gave me a box of four by accident because they thought all four of them was one. And I didn't find out till like three or four months later after the whole thing was over with and I opened it up. So I threw it up to hit some balls and see you know, what it was like to swing in there. Um, these stools, I searched probably six to eight months on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist to find a set of stools in here that would kind of match and would kind of work. Uh, I think I paid 25 bucks for all three of these stools. Finally found one. Uh, so me swing. Okay, enclosure. That gets more about what this is. So after I took had the frame, I framed out the enclosure it, for the, the frame of the enclosure. Uh, I took this enclosure to a guy I know. And I said, build me a, well, he does sewing for like a upholstery, it's like a upholstery shop. I said, build me a enclosure that goes, you know, a fabric that goes up and over and around this and had to explain what it was for. And um, I needed something special built because my mini split, as you can see, is right back there. I needed this top part to be like a net material so I can get air to come down through. So when you're in here, you can't, let's see if I can show you. You might be able to see it. You kind of see a little bit, and you kind of tell it's a, that's a net on top. But it's only like the first four feet that's the net. Um, well, probably more than that. It's probably five, six feet that's net. And then the back is the, the canvas material for the sides. Hmm, swinging. Excited to start swinging, hitting balls that I didn't get a hit. I had to rent that ladder because I couldn't get to the ceiling with my regular ladder. So I had to rent a ladder for 20 bucks for four hours. So that's how the enclosure goes up and around. You can kind of see how it's a netting material on top. It's not a net, it's like a mesh, I should say mesh. 
So this is how I tied the enclosure to the back pole. So it's with 550 cord all the way around. Mm -hmm. See, then we, we did Velcro all the way at the bottom to make it Velcro. And I think this is first turning on the projector. Now, so the projector pole and the light, which I don't think I have. I'll take a picture of that. I might have to show you with the camera. Okay, well, this work. So this pole was from Amazon. Um, it was like 25 bucks. I bought the, the, it was listed new for like 40, but I think I had it used one for like 20 something. And since it was just a metal pole, and I knew that I was going to have to do something to make it longer because it was only like four foot. So I had to increase this length by, I don't even know how many inches, probably 18, 16 inches, maybe something like that. So I had to modify it anyway. So it was a way to, to use, you know, to save some money. So I bought like the, the used one, which was basically just new. It was just an open box. And then I used a piece of the conduit pipe, painted it black, drilled some holes in it and extended it down to make the projector to where it needed to be just under the lip of the top of the screen. And you can see by doing the inset of the enclosure inside the floor how that gives you that uh, that nice um, you know turf into the, the screen look there. Yeah, I think it was the first play. See me swinging. Nothing exciting there. Okay, this is where it's bare bones. First build it. Oh, again, this trim is all um, that's all pallets. So this is all pallet pieces that were cut down and uh, stained. So like three bucks, I think, is what that would have came out to be end up being for all the trim for that for that one wall. Because a pallet was, how much I paid for a pallet? Six bucks a pallet, maybe? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bad picture. Okay, my daughter's playing. I'm going to get through this. Okay, so these three pictures, so the frames um, was scrap wood that I built and then stained with the same stain used for everything else in here. And then the pictures just came from Etsy and I just framed them out and um, uh, used push pins on the back to push them through. So there's not like a glass or anything up there. They're just kind of, um, they're just there with a frame around them. All right, so this is this is the more recent picture after building the uh, club rack over here and adding in some lights, lights behind the TV. So the TVs, just used ones off the marketplace. The lights, um, so this light, the light back behind this TV, the light behind this TV. There's more lights in the ceiling. There's these lights. So these lights came from Amazon. These two here, the little drop lights. They're just battery operated. Um, and I have a battery, I have a, they're with rechargeable batteries, so I have a charging station over there, so if I ever need to, I can just switch them out. Um, but these ones just plug in USB to the back of the TV, and then the little wire hide, hiding uh, plastic casing thing it came from a little store called Five Below, so I got like three of those. They're just plastic, and they stick to the wall, and then you run your cables in them to make it look a little nicer. And you can paint them too, I just haven't done that yet. The light that's under here is a motion light. Um, it was like five bucks, but it kind of just makes it look neat if you go to pull the chair out or whatever, you, the light comes on. Uh, let's see, I don't know. Yeah, so this rack, I'll show you how I built the rack. I thought I had pictures in here of how I built the rack, but I'll, I might have to move the camera and show you. But yeah, they're just TVs, you can buy them used, and then you know, as long as you have a, a um, computer that has a HDMI output, um, or even VGA, or you can even get converters to make it work with whatever you have. It, it doesn't matter. Um, 
and they're cheaper than you know just you know, looking for a computer monitor all right so I think that is the final one um, and then you can see the control box there I guess so if you know if you're looking to build one of these and you need a control box that's what I do I build these so this is uh, if you don't know um, this is used so you don't have to walk back and forth to aim you know you can just this goes down here and you know you hit it with your club uh, and then I guess th I get asked about this this uh, rack, this club rack over here. So try not to. I'll move this as far as I can, let it, let it stretch, and I'll explain how I did it. Let me move this. Sorry, try not to make you nauseous. But so this is all made out of pallets. So basically, those two by threes for the sides for the bottom. And then I drilled a hole. Oh, I can't get any closer. Sorry, it doesn't go any closer. Um, I drilled, I, put, I took a drill bit, and then I marked like a quarter inch or so with a piece of tape, and I drilled a hole every however many, I don't know, probably two and a half inches or so, all the way down through there. And then above that, I made a mark above these on this little strip of board. And then these are just uh, pull cue holders. You can buy them off of Amazon, like 40 of them are like 18 bucks or 16 bucks maybe. And then I just screwed all those in. And then, so it gives you a club rack. So if I figure out the cost, this whole thing, so that's $1, $2, those are more, so three. And then, so roughly 20 bucks for that whole thing. And it matches with everything else, so it, you know, it, it looks good. And then that is uh, a real club holder that used to be gray. I got it from uh, a, I called a local um, golf shop store and said, hey, do you have any of those little stands that you guys have? And they said, yeah, we got one in the back. And I said, you want to sell it? And he said, sure, 30 bucks, it's yours. So I went and picked it up and then I painted it brown, like a coffee brown to match with everything else that's in here. And then PXG sent me a sticker with my order that I stuck on the bottom to make it look like it belonged. Oh, the light. So the light that's up there. Let me move this over. Sorry. Try not to make you sick. Can you see the light right? Oh, there we go. That light. So, the light was an afterthought. I mean, I knew I was going to do some sort of light, but I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to actually you know, turn the light on and off. So I decided since there's electric in the ceiling, there's an outlet in there and I ran an Amazon, uh, an Amazon, and a, um, like a smart outlet, um, Alexa enabled outlet thing. And then ran it down to that light. And that light is also from Amazon, and it is called a landscape light. Let's see if I can find it. I don't know if I'll find it. Yeah, yeah. Similar to. Let me search 110. There it is. This bad boy right there. Let me make this bigger so you can see. Uh, this button? Yeah. So it's this light. I had to extend this cord a little bit. But it's so 16 bucks. And I just ran it up to the ceiling and stuck it on a Alexa um, enabled, you know, little smart, smart plug thing. You can get them for. I mean, a whole pack of them, I think, for 20 or 30 bucks where you get, like, five of them or something. And then if I want to turn that light on, I can either use Alexa or I just downloaded the app on my computer. And then I just go to Devices and hit this button. And then the light comes on. Does it, does it come on? Can you see it? Yeah, it's on. Anyway, it's on. And then if I want to turn it off, I can just click that and turn it off. So I control all that from the computer. Um, I think that's it. 
I guess if you have any questions about the build or anything, you put them down in the comments. Um, if you have any questions at all about you know any way I did something or why I did something some way, chances are I didn't put a lot of thought into it. I can tell you that. So uh, I'll tell you why I did. Oh, the door. That door here. Hang on. Let me swing this around. That door there. That is just a roll down door. Like uh, they use for commercial units. Um, that's what I use in the other side of the building. So I knew I was going to build this room at some point. So I just ordered three when I ordered those. And it's like a naturally sent me the wrong side. They sent me a bigger door than they were supposed to. Um, but it allows it to be, you know, it's a bigger than just a, a man door. Um, and honestly, they're cheaper if you want to. It's cheaper to buy one of those than it is to buy like a French door. And then when the French door opens, you have to figure out, you know, you're going to hit stuff when you when it opens and swings open. That just goes up, and that worked out fine. Uh, let's see, I think I got it all fans bigger. Um, I did use some extra wood over there to build a little coat rack. Not that it's that exciting, but a little coat rack there. So I bought four hooks, used a piece of wood from the from the um, pallets and made that. Um, I talked about the TVs, talked about the floor, talked about the bar. Uh, I do have an X putt to put in here somewhere at some point, so I got to figure out a TV to be set up for just for the X putt. Um, all right, so I guess that's it. If you have any questions about anything in here, how I did anything, or why I did anything, or if you have any control box questions, you can get a hold of me at rocksorgolf.com my phone number's on there if you want to call me or text me uh, I'm east coast time preferably before 5 o'clock after that I can't guarantee that I will respond so before that message me any questions happy to help I don't care if you buy anything from me or not but if you want any um, you know, advice or help with anything let me know I enjoy talking about it so I think that's it that's an hour long alright wow that's got to be like the most in-depth golf simulator video on YouTube. Build. All right. Till we meet again.